So our second option within Turning Point Web is our Anywhere polling. As you can see, it took a second, it logged me in. So our second option for Turning Point Web is Anywhere polling. So we can click Start Now on Anywhere polling, and it's going to automatically prompt us for our session ID which once again I'm just going to use my basic UTK OIT 100 and have everything automatically save into my OIT test course. Once again with Turning Point Web everything is automatically saved to our web so we do not need to upload grades, we do not need to remember to save a session, it's automatically saved. When we start Anywhere Polling with Turning Point Web, it gives us our command bar up here. In the lower right, we can see how many people are connected. We are, I currently have zero connected. You can see our session ID. Up here, we have our open polling, so this would default with a basic question type. We can see our number of responses. We can toggle on whether we're showing or hiding charts, we can minimize or maximize the window. So if we want to make this bar smaller, we can easily do that. We also have a few menu settings here. We can show a countdown timer. This is kind of nice. We can add, subtract time onto it very easily. We can toggle anonymous questions. We can hide the session information if we want to. We can also jump into our preferences. So once again, all these preferences are the same as what we saw on the PowerPoint questions. We can choose to display our show bar, whether our charts are displaying on our student accounts, whether we are, how we're displaying our chart values. Here, though, we do have an option of when we send a screenshot to participants. Um, we can choose when I open polling or never. Um, so if you want to send your students a screenshot of what's currently on your screen, you can do that when you open polling. You can set the default question to how many responses. So if you normally ask a true or false, you can set this to two. You can set your correct um, answer response and you can set your default countdown timer once again you can enable physical clicker support but you do need the dongle attached to your computer and you have the basic administration settings here and once again you can provide feedback so if you click the down arrow you do get multiple choice and you can choose your responses here you do have a multiple response so this is different than your multiple choice similar but different this automatically enables that ability to choose all that apply you do have a short answer a word cloud numeric response and a hotspot now my only caveat with hotspot is make sure you're prepared with this one we're going to go through each one of these and show you how to set them up in a live environment like this so if we choose multiple choice for two answers it's going to automatically open polling you see it now says close and the question is open this is designed to allow you to ask questions on the fly so you could ask something that has two answers like are you paying attention a yes b no and when you close polling you can actually show the responses and there are no responses to show with this question so so we are now going to step through each of the question choices as you can see now i have one user online so you can see how you would see these responses as they're coming in. So if you just click the open, it's going to default to a four question multiple choice 
answer. So students will be able to see answer A, B, C, D on their devices. And you can go ahead and give those as a verbal cue, or you can bring something up on your screen. As students answer, you're going to see the responses go up. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and my responses are going to go ahead and show. Now, the nice thing that you can do here is you can toggle off number and response, so you can choose between those. But the neat thing here is you can grade on the fly, so we can click the green and green check red X to set correct response. I can click this here and everything goes gray and let's say A was the correct response. I'm going to click that there and then uncheck it. So A is the correct response and everything else is incorrect. Now the drop down arrow here gives us a little bit more choices over our question types. We have the multiple choice. So if I go and choose just a two answer multiple choice, and this is going to be A is yes and B is no. Um, as they respond, you'll see the responses toggling up. We're going to click close. And you're going to see those responses. Once again, we can go in here and check the correct um, answers for any of these so we can grade on the fly. My next question is a multiple response. So this is the multiple choice, multiple response. So if I choose all 10 and I give the students a list of 10 options, they will see A through J on their device and they can choose any answers that they want. And when I close this, you will see all the responses that the students had. And if you want to, you can toggle correct answers as well. Our next question type is a short answer. So you can ask a question and they're just going to get a prompt on their screen to show an answer or to type in an answer. So if I ask what color is the turning point logo, they should type in blue. And when I close it, we're going to see the responses. So this is an easy way to get quick feedback without having to go in and actually create questions. So you can actually do these on the fly and create that engaging type response system. Word cloud is the same thing. It is a short answer, but instead of displaying in a list, it is going to display in that word cloud format. Two more options here. We have numeric response. Once again, this only allows them to respond with a number. So if I ask them, what is the, um, what is two plus two? They could answer. And when you close it, we're going to see those. So the numeric is a unique question type. It limits it to a number only, but it acts almost like a short answer. The final question type is the hotspot. Now you need to be prepared with the hotspot question type because it sends a screenshot of your computer. So right now I have a black screen on my computer or on my phone and I can tap anywhere on it. So you need to be prepared with this one to have your image up already. So when I click close, you're going to see what they're seeing. You see my screen, you actually see my record area, and you see where I tapped. So those are the six question types that you have with the Poll Anywhere version of Turning Point Web. Once again, these are more on the fly question types and they work well when you want to actually have active conversations and engagement with your students to be able to respond. So when I close this and I can go in here and close out a polling, it's going to ask me to name my session if I want to. I can click finish and that session is automatically saved up to the website. So I don't have to do anything else. 
and I can close out of turning point. In one of our other um, videos, you will see how to look at your grades in the web version of turning point, and we will link to that below.